Hello everyone, this is going to be a tutorial on how to use OBS Studio for new streamers and what, you know, how to, how to pretty much navigate this beautiful piece of equipment. Even though lately it's been a little rocky, but uh, as long as you're using, I'm actually finding out that as long as you're using the right bit, like 64-bit, 32-bit, uh, you're running it as administrator, you really don't have any, any issues with it whatsoever. So let's just hop right into it, okay? We're going to go to the most important part, uh, which is just going to go straight into your settings. The general, this is uh, pretty much all irrelevant besides your language, and then the theme, you can go dark or you can go default. Uh, your streaming services, the stream type, it's, it's always going to be streaming services. Your service is going to be Twitch. Uh, if you want YouTube, Hitbox, whatever, then you go to the website and you're going to probably post whatever the key is on that website. But for now, we'll stick to Twitch. Uh, you're going to use whatever closest server you are. Uh, you got EU, Australia, Asia, um, and South America servers, so quick, click which one is ever closest to you. And then you're going to go onto your Twitch TV, your Twitch TV uh, at the top right. Click on your name, go to your dashboard, and then the, your, you'll see the stream key option. You click on that, show it, boom, copy and paste that puppy in here, apply. Moving on over to output, uh, you're going to go into output mode, advanced, uh, rate control, CBR, constant bit rate. That means that you're constantly uh, sending out the exact same bit rate the entire time, not fluctuating, making sure that it, it you, your, you know, your video is clear and HD slash, you know, not messing up all the time. Your bitrate is going to be, two th if you're a newer streamer, I recommend 2,000, 2,500, or at the most 3,000. I really do recommend 2,500 because I don't think that people have the option to choose uh, a quality on newer streams. So that means that if someone doesn't have the greatest connection and they're watching you, they can't. They can't and they can't load it you know a 3000 bitrate stream then it's going to be laggy for them even though it'll be clear for most people and you're trying to attract as many people as possible and i think 2500 is the perfect in between balance uh, once you get an audio option or a video option you can immediately you know bump up the bitrate to you know 3000 3500 uh, mine's at 4500 because this is just a recording so it's just i just need it to look good keyframe interval zero cpu usage uh the higher it is uh, the less CPU it is on your computer, but the less CPU usage that you're using uh, like for the stream, it, it doesn't look as clear. So if you have a monster of a computer, you can go slower. If you have a, you know, if you have a lot of CPU essentially to, to kind of pass around. Um, but if you don't, then you want to go faster. So very fast is, is pretty much, you know, this is what I use and it's, it's really good. I could probably even knock it down a couple, but I really like messing around with my settings too much. You know, when, it, when I got everything working, I like it the way it is. For audio, your sample rate, 44.1 stereo desktop audio device. This is uh, how people are going to hear, you know, whatever you're doing. So if you're on a desktop, I have a mix amp plugged in. So everything that I, you know, that comes through the mix amp, which is basically on my computer, everyone can hear. So Discord, Skype, YouTube, uh, the game that I'm playing, etc. Your microphone, same thing. It's just gonna be whatever you're using for your microphone. Pretty simple. Plug it in via USB and slap it in there. Uh, it'll always register the microphone if you know if the driver's wrecked. This is how you just you know push to talk delays. I don't really recommend any of this, but we're just keeping it simple here. Your video output is currently active because I'm recording this. Uh, but it's going to be the same no matter what your base canvas res resolution. This is for OBS and U 1920 by 1080. And then your outscale scaled resolution. This is kind of what everyone sees. You want that on 720 unless you have a God PC and a streaming PC and and you, you have an insane upload because this is going to be a massive, massive like it, it takes a lot on your CPU. It takes a lot on your computer, which is your CPU. It takes, I mean, it takes a lot on everything um, and your upload. It, it also like it, it stresses that out pretty hard too. So you, if you have, if you can handle it, go for it. I always recommend downscaling. It, it helps out your games as well to run better. Common, common FPS is going to be 60 all the time because that's just what everything is. By cubic sharpened scaling, 16 samples. That's the downscale filter as well. You're going to go into your hotkeys. This is uh, pretty interesting and very important because you want really clean transitions for your scenes, um, and you don't, and you don't want to have to you know alt tab click on obs and then click on you know your scene that you want up you want to have your hotkeys there i usually have mine set to f1 f2 f3 f4 because that's just super simple and already on my my fingers already on the keyboard so when i want to switch over to h1z1 i click f3 if i want to switch over to uh, my monitor capture 
to capture, you know, a YouTube video or something, I'll, go, I'll hit F2. If I want uh, my webcam, my full screen webcam, I do F1. If I want to zoom in, I have that set to, you know, little guy right here. It's, it's all really, a, you know, wherever you feel comfortable pressing the button. And then advanced process priority is going to be high. You want that your OBS getting as much, uh, you know, as, as much focus as possible so that it doesn't lag ever. A laggy stream can be very bad for you. You never need stream delay. Uh, and all the automatic reconnect, this is if you disconnect, that's also pretty, I mean, irrelevant. If you disconnect, you disconnect, you, someone probably hit you offline or something or your uh, your internet's down and the reconnect is pretty relevant. I like to just restart OBS every time if I if it ever goes down for me. Oh, uh, this is just how right here, the the mixer. I like this as well because it's just right in front of you on OBS Studio. It's pretty advanced. I can turn my mic down, I can slide it all the way back up. I can, you know, mute it by clicking on this or I can go here, uh, add a filter. I can add a noise gate by clicking the little plus sign, gain, noise suppression, noise gate. I recommend a noise gate for all microphones just so that it doesn't pick up every single possible thing that happens, uh, you know, breathing, mic clicks, uh, you know, anything really, you know, keyboard clicking. I mean, usually if you have a, a mechanical keyboard, it's going to happen, which is unfortunate. Uh, but, you know, people love it. People love it. That's why they buy it to begin with. And I mean, that's pretty much that. That's the, the majority of everything. Uh, all that's really left here, you know, is your scene transition. Do you want to cut to it or fade? I always recommend fade. It just looks better. That means that it'll be fading in and out. Let me try to like, see if I have something like, okay, so boom, boom. And now it's, uh, it's super clean and it just fades in and out. I mean, it's beautiful. You want to go to cut. Can, but I think it's just too like, you know, bam in your face. So I'm a big fan of the fade. Big fan of the fade. You can mess around with it, do whatever you want. Uh, last but not least uh, for OBS Studio is adding your scene. You just click the little plus sign here, add the scene, and then once and then once you click on that, uh, you just add all of your sources in. It really is. It's just super simple. It's just plug and play. It really is. It's like. You know, you, if you have a USB, your microphone's USB, anything you want to add in here, images, shirts, boom, you click on this, your, your browser source, these are CLR browsers, so if you have uh, alerts or anything like that, that, that require an actual link, you can use that right there with the browser source. You plug it in here, uh, your display capture is going to be, you know, your monitor, if you want to capture just your monitor, your game capture, this is for any games that you're playing on your computer, you start the game, then you registered as game capture it'll capture it image pictures on the internet whatever you want slideshow if you throw in three pictures into the image slideshow it'll just rotate through those pictures media source you know video scene yeah uh text di they'll, they'll, i don't really think you really need these video capture device window capture video capture device is your capture card so if you're playing on the playstation xbox one using an elgato capture card or anything like that if ever the drivers are all in stock Excuse me, if the drivers are all installed and everything's good to go, once you click on this, it'll register it, you pop it in, um, and then you just play, man. Uh, OBS will always usually register it as long as you have the, all the drivers plugged in. The window capture, this is for like, if you want to pull up iTunes and then click it out and then capture the song you're playing, you can do that. Uh, other than that, man, this is, this is really all, all that you guys need. I always recommend OBS Studio over OBS because OBS Studio is much lighter on your CPU, uh, which means that it's just, it just runs better. It, it's not, and, 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 and it's more advanced, right? So why not? I hope you guys uh, enjoy this little tutorial on how to run OBS. Uh, honestly, if you just pretty much copy everything that I said, uh, you really won't have any issues. And if you guys have any other questions or you know specific things like, oh, this isn't working, or this capture card's not working, it, it isn't registering this microphone. I promise all that stuff. If you guys go to YouTube uh, and take it there for your questions on, on errors, they will have an answer for everything. Uh, but this really is just a simple setup video, and I hope that you guys uh, can take something away from it. All right, good luck streaming, everyone.